Hello and welcome to the new beta 2 of Domino 1201. My name is Thomas Hampel. I'm the product manager for Domino and I'm going to walk you through some of the new features that we are going to put out in this beta. So let's start with upgrading your existing server to the latest version. So here you can see I have my Domino V12 server and I have already downloaded the 1201 beta package. The first thing you have to do is, of course, to shut down your server. Um, that might take a second or two to complete. So once that is done, uh, you just run the installer. Here in my case, I'll have to do that with admin permissions. And we're going to accept the defaults for the temporary directory. So the installer will extract the data to this folder. And once that's done, the install anywhere process is going to prepare the installation. Okay, for this setup, we're going to use English. Let's quickly walk through the installation process. So clicking next. Of course, accepting terms and conditions of the license agreement. Then briefly checking if the program directory here is the correct one. Click Next. Also verify the data directory is correct. Here in my case, it's C data domino. And then just go with the defaults. Click Install. The installation itself will take a couple of minutes. Um, usually something between like three to maybe 10 minutes or so. How long it will take really depends on the performance of the machine you are using. Here in my case, you see it's rather fast. So we're almost complete. It's already at 100%. It's adding icons and voila, upgrade done. So the next step is to start the Domino server again. And when starting the server after applying the upgrade, it will prompt me whether I wanna upgrade the Domino directory design. And for my test environment, I wanna do this, so I choose yes. Once the server has started up successfully, let's do a quick show server. And here you can see that we are running on the latest beta two build of 1201. Now that we've upgraded our server to beta 2, let's take a closer look at the features that you will get with this release. You asked for it, we deliver. Based on your request, Domino 1201 will have support for DKIM. So for those of you who don't know, DKIM stands for Domain Keys Identified Mail. And it's been a popular request out there on our ideation platform for quite a while. So. It is a technology widely used to prevent spoofing of emails, prevent phishing and email spam. And the main idea is that outbound emails are signed by the mail server so that the recipient can validate the email by looking up a DNS text record. So in more details, take a look at this chart below. Um, you have the Domino server where your emails are sent through and the Domino is um, sending an email to a recipient somewhere on the internet. So in order for DKIM to be configured, you will need to have access to your DNS configuration and um, you will need to have a public private key pair. The private key goes to your Domino server and the public key is stored as a DNS text record so that the recipient can look it up. When you send an email through your Domino server, Domino will sign that email, not encrypt, but sign the email with the private key. And the recipient will then be able to look up DNS to retrieve the public key. And um, with that public key, it can validate the email it just received. And assuming that it is deemed to be a legit email, it will route this email to the recipient. So this is how DKIM is working. Please note in this version of Domino, DKIM is supported for outbound mails only. And of course, it is not a replacement for end-to-end -end encryption of emails. So of course, you can should continue to uh, encrypt emails. This is just going to add another layer of um, spoofing protection to fight off spam. If you are interested in testing out this feature, take a look at the documentation. The link is at the 
bottom right. So we're looking forward to hear your feedback on how you like this feature. Another feature we are adding is internationalized domain name support, IDN in short. Internationalized domain name is the, the, the right-hand side of the email address, meaning everything on the right-hand side of the at sign. And according to the specification, it is allowed, it is possible to have email addresses that contain an umlaut as part of the domain name. An example is the country of Austria, which is local name is Österreich. Greetings, by the way, to all customers in Austria. Domino 1201 will finally enable customers to send and receive emails from and to an IDN domain. It does not only positively affect customers in Austria with an email address of that kind, but also it will enable a number of other countries and geographies that leverage their local character set as part of the email address. Please note, um, internationalized domain names only uh, means the, the right-hand side of the email address is allowed to contain like these special characters. Everything on the local side of the email address, meaning on the left side of the at sign, is considered international email addresses, EAI. And that is a different standard, which is currently not supported. For more details, please take a look at the documentation. The link is down there. And of course, for this feature, we also would like to have your feedback in our discussion forum. So please try it out, test it out in your geography with your character set. And yeah, let us know how you like that feature. If you're already using Domino 12, you know about our new certificate manager, which you can use to request TLS certificates and manage TLS certificates for your Domino servers. In 1201, the certificate manager will see two improvements. One is easy to explain. It's the ability to import and export certificates that would also include PEM file format. So you see here on the right-hand side, um, you specify a file name, and uh, you can either import or export a certificate uh, to that from and to that file. Another different one, another uh, another enhancement is um, another enhancement to the certificate manager is the ability to manage micro CAs, meaning micro certificate authorities. What that is, I probably am going to show live so that you get a better understanding of what it is. So let me switch back to my server. So for using the new micro CA, what we have to do is to open up our certificate store database. And within that certificate store database, we go to the view certificate authorities. Here, I can add an account. And uh, I would like this account to be called, um, let's say Domino CA123 maybe. And this is type micro CA. Key type RSA, well, let's try that and click Submit. And just a few seconds later, the new Michael CA with the name Domino CA123 was created. <clears throat> now, how do we use this root CA for TLS, TLS credentials? So what I have to do is to go back to the TLS credentials view. As you can see, I already have a certificate for my server called domino.demo.com, but uh, the environment that I'm using here um, is using a different server name. So let me just show you. My server here is called server1woodburn.digital, and I would like to have a proper TLS certificate for that host name. Now, my demo environment is completely isolated. I don't have any internet connection here in this example. I don't even have access to any DNS server. So neither proxy nor a DNS challenge uh, for Let's Encrypt would work. So what I would like to do is to use the micro CA for uh, issuing a new TLS certificate for the server name in question, uh, for the server name just mentioned before. So let's do that. Let's add TLS credentials. And as for the host name, we use um, server01.woodburn.digital. And 
the Domino server hosting that DNS name is this one over here. What we would like to do is to use, uh, instead of using Acme, instead of using Let's Encrypt, so to say, I'm going to use the micro CA and we want to use the Domino CA123. And we would like to use elliptic curve keys for that. So that's about it. Let's click Submit. And what the certificate manager task will now do is to take this request. Will It will use the newly created um, Domino CA to uh, issue new a new key that can be used as TLS credentials for this server. The process takes just a couple of seconds and then we have a TLS certificate issued, the internet site being updated and everything is ready to be used. Of course, this certificate was created from a Domino CA that is not trusted in a browser. When I'm now going to use my browser, uh, navigating through this website will, of course, uh, show this security warning because the, the root CA is not trusted by my browser. So in this case, I'll have to click on advanced and then we'll accept the risk or in our case, let's take a closer look at the certificate. So you can see that we really issued a new certificate for that machine. So the issuer here is my organization and it's an elliptic curve key as we requested. So, and of course we can look at the CA, same thing over here, elliptic curve. And well, that's the certificate that I'm going to accept. So let's go back, accept the risk. And we have a proper TLS certificate issued for my Domino server uh, without having to use Let's Encrypt and without having to uh, install a third party CA or a third party certificate on my server. So, so in a situation where you need the communication between your browser and your server to be TLS secured, this is one way of doing it. And of course, that's not the way it should be done in production, but there are situations where you really want the default to be a, an SSL TLS secured connection rather than an unencrypted connection. And that's why the micro CA is a first starting point for getting uh, TLS certificates issued. Back to my slide deck, you don't have to configure the micro CA in this uh, manual way as I just showed it. You can of course automate this process, for instance, by using the new one touch configuration. This feature was introduced in Domino 12 and in this new beta 2, we are enhancing it with three new options. You can now register new users during the server setup and also do the SSL TLS configuration, which I just did in, in the demo before, and you can set up directory assistance entries all just through an entry in this JSON configuration file. For more details, take a look at this link below. And really, I think especially business partners will find this very handy because they can now deploy an entire server, including their application, including the TLS setup is easier than ever before. Really, take a look at this. It's an interesting one to, uh, to know about. When talking about server deployments, we also have to talk about how to back up a Domino server. And as you know, we have introduced a new Domino backup solution, which is provided uh, as part of Domino 12. Now, based on your feedback, we have improved this further on with two very interesting new enhancements. The, the first one is for customers that already have a working backup solution that they want to integrate with. So they, they would like to use the new Domino backup user interface in order to manage their restores. And we have now provided the necessary integration points to make this possible. So that means you would still do your backup with the existing backup software you have, but then when you want to do a restore, you can use the, the user interface in order to instruct your backup environment or your backup solution on how to recover the data. It's just a user interface to the backup solution that you already have, but it's especially of interest for Domino admins because they don't have to switch between different tools. 
The second one is even more interesting, not only for customers using Veeam, but actually to all of you. In order to provide a simple and easy way to configure the integration with your backup vendor correctly, we are, as of today, launching our new open source repository of Domino backup vendor integrations. This is a free of charge repository of settings that administrators can import into Domino to quickly set up the integration with a specific backup vendor. Many customers asked for supporting Veeam, which is why we are providing this as a first example, and there is more to come. However, with the approach to use open source, we continue to develop solutions together with our customers. So we would like to invite you to join this project, to join our community and contribute to this repository by sharing your vendor specific integration in this open source project. If you want to contribute, just issue a pull request to this Git repository and make sure that other customers can benefit from a specific integration that you already have working okay. Now it's up to you. Please head over to our FlexNet download portal and check out the beta products category where you can find the software downloads you'll need to check out all the features I presented in this video. Of course, we would like to get your feedback we want to know whether you like this feature. We want to know if you found any bugs. So please make sure to test this in your environment with your setup, your applications, and provide us feedback. If you want to submit feedback, please use our beta forum by accessing the link below or by scanning the QR code shown here. If you don't have an account, make sure to register a new account first before trying to access the forum. With that, I hope you like the features that you have seen. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy testing this new beta release. Happy testing!